if you would get your Bibles and turn with me to the Old Testament. It's 1st Samuel. And we're going to look at chapter 30 in 1st Samuel. Four verses from First Samuel, the thirtieth chapter. Which verses? Do you have it? Amen. And it came to pass when David and his men were coming to Ziglag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south. And, and Ziklag had been smitten, and burned in the fire, and had taken the women captive that were very ill. They slew either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captive. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. That's good enough. Father, as we look now into your word, bring it to my remembrance. Set the captive free. Amen. We ask in the name of Jesus Christ, let your name be glorified. Amen? Amen. You may be seated. Maybe 10 minutes. I want you to read this chapter through. Maybe two times. And for maybe 10 minutes, I want to talk to you on crisis faith. Crisis faith. Crisis faith. Crisis faith. Amen. On this occasion, we're not going to go into a long, long, a long background, but on this occasion, David was living in the city of Ziglag. Perhaps he should not have been living there. It was enemy territory. He left the land of Judah. You find it over there in the 27th chapter of 1 Samuel. His faith began to fall. And he decided to go and live among the enemies of God and allow them to protect him and not God. Mm. So he went over to Ziglag to live. You will find if you study the chapters on through that the king of the Philistines inducted him into his army. And he was going to have to fight against the people that he was going to rule one day. When we begin to fraternize with the wrong people, mm -hmm. and get ourselves in a world of trouble. Yeah. Amen. Who's been over there? Say that. And so we find him here, if you keep studying it before you get to the 30th chapter, that the king wanted him to fight, but the lords of the Philistines did not want him to go and fight. They believed he would turncoat, be a turncoat. 
So they dismissed him in the 29th chapter from the honor from the army with an honorable discharge because the king loved him. And here we come to the 30th chapter here. He's dismissed from the army and it took him three days to arrive back home in Ziglag with 600 men. When he arrived home in this little city of Ziglag, lo and behold, the Amalekites had raided and burned it to the ground. Tragic. Tragic. Perhaps the Lord allowed it to be burned to the ground. Because he wanted him to leave there. If you study the sixth chapter, they lifted up their voices and wept. All of their 600 wives, all of their children, have been taken captive. Nowhere inside. It says here in 1 Samuel chapter 30 and verse 2 speaking of the Amalekites as they carried them away said but carry them away. Well, that's from the King James Version. They drove them away. Yes. In the group. They drove them away. Just like you, you would drive cattle. <coughs> Just like a herdsman would drive cattle. The Amalekites were on horses. And all the women and the children were there. And they drove them just like you would drive cattle away. Perhaps into slavery. When you go into slavery, it's a bad life. Amen. So David and his men lifted up their voices and wept. In fact, they cried so they have no more power to do. So we come face to face with a crisis. A crisis, a crisis does not make a person. It reveals what we're made of. Whatever, whatever you have in you, it's going to come out yes. during the crisis. If you do not have faith in God, it's going to show up when you get to crisis. Amen. Two people can react in different ways to the same crisis. David's men, 600 of them, reacted to the crisis by becoming bitter. They wept, they cried, but their grief turned into bitterness. Yes. And they began to look for a scapegoat. That's what some folks do in the crisis. Yes. Amen. They turned bitter. And they look for a scapegoat. And they blame others yes. in a crisis. That's what they did. 
In fact, if you look at verse 6, they became so bitter during the crisis, they was going to stone David. Yes. Yes. Bitter. These were covenant people, but they had no faith when the crisis came. Look at verse 6. It tells David's reaction to the same crisis. Yes. Same crisis. It says here, and David was greatly, I love that, greatly distressed. In fact, the verb actually means he was like taking some clay and a potter would mold it, put it in a vessel. He was crushed. He was crushed by the crisis. But he did not become bitter. He did not become bitter. Verse 6 tells us that he encouraged himself. Amen. In the Lord. Amen. I love that. Amen. Now there were 600 men there. Not one of them was in shape to encourage him in the Lord. They were filled with bitterness. And my brothers and sisters, when you're going through a crisis, never look to other folks to encourage you. Amen. You have to learn Amen. to encourage Amen. yourself. Amen. 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 I'm an old man now, but I'm still a handsome old man. <laughs> But I've learned how in all these years when I'm going through a crisis how to encourage myself in the Lord. Yes. One of my favorite scriptures and I say it to myself when I'm going through a crisis is found in Isaiah 43 and verse 2, you can quote it for it. When thou passest through the waters, God said, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not reach overflow thee. When you walk through the fire, can I get an amen? amen? You will shall not be burned. Neither shall the flames kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord. Amen. Thy God. Yes. I have learned to encourage myself when I'm going through a crisis. Because I can't always depend on other folks. Amen. If you've got faith, you will encourage yourself. But if you don't have faith, you'll react like these 600 men. You'll get here. When you're going through a crisis. David also, in verse 8, and I'm about finished now, then we'll go down and eat our spaghetti and meatballs. <laughs> He, 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 he knew that the Lord, he could only find his encouragement in God. Amen. That's where, that's where courage and strength come when you're going through a crisis. You've got to turn to God. Amen. You've got to turn in faith to God. God will bring you out of that crisis. Yes. Amen. 
Amen. He turned to God. And in verse 8, God gave him a promise. And the promise was that he would be victorious. God told him in something, pursue. And you will be victorious. Now God did not tell him where the Amalekites were in camp. Didn't tell him that. Just gave him a promise. Yes. Because God wants to teach us, even in a crisis, how to walk by faith. Yes. And not by sight. Yes. So they jumped on their beast and they went from Ziglag all the way in verse 9 to the, to the brook, they call it the brook Besor. It was really not a brook. It was raging water. It was raging waters because faith has to be tested. Yes. 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 If your faith cannot stand the test, it's not genuine faith. Amen. Can I say this? Amen. Faith has to be tested. Yes. So when they got to the brook, the soil, they call it a brook. It was not a brook. It was raging waters. Because faith has to be tested. Amen. This is where the test came. Only 400 men could cross these raging waters. Two of them, 200 of them, had to be left on this side. Yes. Amen. But they crossed over to the other side. Keep reading the story when you go home. And the moment they got over on the other side, God revealed to them where the Amalekites were encamped through an Egyptian boy that the Amalekites had left for dead. God kept him alive Amen. so that his promise that they would have victory could be fulfilled. My brothers and sisters, when you're going through a crisis, number one, don't blame others. Amen. 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 Don't blame others. And don't blame God. Amen. Amen. I've had to counsel people that blame God when they're going through a crisis. No. Trust God. Yeah. Trust God and put your faith in God and you'll come through the crisis. Stand on your feet. Amen.